that day, for no particular reason, I decided to go for a little run. Stop. You know the scene. We all know the scene. It's Forrest Gump running. It's iconic. He runs for three years, two months, 14 days, and 16 hours. That's a fuck ton of running. Forrest Gump did a lot of unbelievable things in his life, but the most unbelievable always seemed to be that run. Forrest told us how long he ran, but he never said how far. He never gave us a distance. And that's what I want to figure out. My objectives are to find out how many miles Forrest Gump ran, break down how many miles he ran per day, establish a timeline for the run, and try not to lose my mind in the process. Now the first step would be figuring out Forrest's starting point, which should be easy, right? Well, not exactly. Because Forrest Gump's famed Greenbow, Alabama doesn't actually exist. So I decided to look up every town in the great state of Alabama that started with a letter G. The two closest towns by name are Greensboro and Greenville. I settled on Greensboro because it had a smaller population, 2,497, to Greenville's 8,135. A traditional Gump-esque Main Street, and it simply had more letters in common. So the run starts with four slowly rising from the rocking chair on the front porch and taking off down the dirt drive in his spotless Nike Cortez kicks. He then takes the most famous left-hand turn in cinematic history and barrels towards Main Street, across Greenbow County, and the great state of Alabama. Let's break that scene down for a second. It's July 5th of some unknown year in the mid to late 70s and Forrest is sad. We know it's July 5th because they were watching the New York Harbor fireworks display the previous evening. He wanders around the house, staring into space, hoping Jenny just left to get milk and cigarettes, until he... For no particular reason, I decided to go for a little run. When he makes the incredibly gifable left-hand turn out the driveway, it's plainly obvious that he never brought a wallet with him for what's about to become a three-year cross-country journey. The timeline for Forrest's run goes to shit even before he makes it out of Greenbow because as he passed the barber shop, the news report on the TV mentions President Carter collapsing during a 10K race in Maryland. The problem is that took place on September 15th of 1979. So unless Forrest sat around the house in the same clothes waiting or looking for Jenny for nearly two months or took a very leisurely pace from his house to Main Street, this doesn't make any sense. That is unless the screenwriter was trying to haphazardly shoehorn historical references into the plot. But you wouldn't do that, would you? Oscar winning screenwriter Eckroth? All right, so the timeline is already fucked, but let's go back to the run. Google Maps wouldn't let me plug in more than 10 locations, so I sought out those paper things that our ancestors used and set out to construct my own detective map complete with push pins and string. You know, like a real professional. Now, the beginning of his run is simple enough to figure out. Fictional Greenbow to Santa Monica Pier is pretty chill 2018 miles. And from the pier to Marshall Point Lighthouse in Port Clyde, Maine is a manageable 3,168 miles. But when Jackson Brown starts singing Running on Empty and Forrest's Great American Montage begins, my investigation hits the wall. We got a nondescript lake followed by an endless field, bridge with mountains, a wood fence with hills, and a scene with New England-esque autumn leaves. The only hint we get is a news report with a tiny vague map documenting Forrest's progress and the fact that at the time of the broadcast, he is about to cross the Mississippi River for the fourth time in what appears to be the St. Louis area. A little digging confirms the stone bridge Forrest crosses is near the St. Mary's Gate entrance of Glacier National Park in Montana, which is about 2,712 miles from the Marshall Point Lighthouse. However, Glacier National Park is much more north than the local TV news map indicates, which calls into question the map's general accuracy. But it's going to be the only thing we have to go off, so I'm going to go ahead and say he heads down 1,232 miles through Oregon and towards San Francisco, and then heads back 2,066 miles to St. Louis. Now he grabs some more Nike swag. Bravo, Phil Knight. Savvy product placement. Finds a friend slash follower slash believer and heads up 620 miles to Grandfather Mountain in Linville, North Carolina in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Now we get some more followers in for his ever-growing running cult as he passes through nondescript desert scenes until he makes it to North San Francisco Street in Flagstaff, Arizona. 
We're fourth amongst the shit happens bumper sticker. And then 23 miles later at Twin Arrows Trading Post inspires the yellow smiley face t-shirt. And now we enter the home stretch up 183 miles to the famed Monument Valley where Forrest suddenly stops after. Three years, two months, 14 days and 16 hours. And tells his running cold. I think I'll go home now. There you have it. Forrest Gump ran a ridiculous 13,889 miles over the course of three years, two months, and 14 days, which ends up being 1,171 days. Divide the miles by the amount of days, and Forrest ran an impressive 12 miles per day over that span. This is where I expected the video to end. It's over. We all move on with our lives, right? Well, not exactly, because I kept watching the movie and something drove me absolutely fucking crazy. The first scene after Forrest Run, he's home watching TV as they report that President Reagan got shot, which happened on March 30th, 1981. Now let's go back to that timeline. There's only one year, six months, and 15 days separating Carter collapsing in Maryland and Reagan's assassination attempt, meaning one of two things. Either Eric Roth is yet again taking liberties with US history to better fit the plot, or, or, Forrest Gump lied about how long he ran. Now before you say Forrest Gump would have never lied about that, let me remind you that he has lied before. He lies for a ping pong paddle endorsement. In fact, he says, when I was in China on the all-American ping pong team, I loved playing ping pong with my Flexo ping pong paddle. Everybody knows it's true, but Mama said it's just a little white lie, so it wasn't hurting nobody. So is it impossible that he lied about how long he ran? Well, Forrest is sitting on a bench during the opening credits of the film. A bus drives by advertising a 1981 Chevrolet Citation. And when Forrest arrives at Jenny's apartment, she shows him press clippings from his run that include a September 1978 Runner's World cover featuring Gump in his red jacket that he acquired somewhere between Santa Monica and the Marshall Point Lighthouse. In fact, all the articles are dated between May 1978 and September 1978, which is a full year before President Carter collapses in the Maryland mountains outside of Camp David. Jumping ahead to Forrest talking to Jenny's gravestone, we see that Jenny Gump was born on July 16, 1945, and died on March 22nd, 1982, which Forrest says was a Saturday, which is also another Forrest lie, or pure laziness, because March 22nd, 1982 is actually a Monday. But if Forrest started running on September 15, 1979, and ran for three years, two months, 14 days, and 16 hours, then he would have finished on November 29th, 1982, and Jenny would already be dead. Which brings me to my next theory. Forrest Gump died in Nam. Think about it. When he gets home, he wins the Medal of Honor, becomes a ping pong celebrity, appears on late night TV with John Lennon, starts an incredibly successful shrimping empire, invests early in Apple stock, has sex with the girl of his dreams, runs around the country for three years with no wallet, wearing an magical pair of sneakers that somehow hold up 14,000 miles when the average top of the line pair today can only withstand 300 to 500 miles and then marries the girl of his dreams? I call bullshit. I mean, before the war, all he did was become an all-American football player and inspire Elvis's signature dance moves. Totally believable things. So Forrest is dead, b blown up in the air raid, died there in the dirt with Bubba and Lieutenant Dan and be it fucking damn! Everything that follows is a dream or heaven or purgatory or whatever you want to believe. Well, it's either that or Forrest started his run on July 5th, 1977. And Mr. Eric Roth, with the approval of director Bob Zemeckis, tossed a couple historical references to punch up the plot and never thought it would result in a BuzzFeed producer casually losing his sanity and dedicating a month of work to becoming a Forrest Gump truther. And I know what you're all thinking. It's just a movie. Something I should simply enjoy instead of pulling at all the unimportant loose strings. And you know what? You're probably right. But you know what also annoys me though? How long was he sitting at that fucking bus stop? I mean, really, what's going on with this Savannah public transportation system? No, 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 I really want to get...